So good afternoon. Um, we're going to work on um, graphing linear equations. I want to use a strategy that's referred to solving for y. Now we've talked about two strategies uh, for graphing linear equations so far. We talked about finding um, three solutions and also using the x and y intercepts to graph. So look at this equation right here. Typically if I see an equation like this, I would probably use the x and y intercepts based on what we've been doing, but this next strategy is going to lead us into some other strategies as well. So we also want to talk about uh, solving for y and using that strategy. So again, to solve for y, we basically want to use what we call the zero pair on the x term. So to get the y by itself, we go up to the x term first and we want to use a negative two x to zero it out. I have to use a negative two x over there on the other side of the equation to keep it balanced. So 2x and negative 2x are going to zero out. My 3y comes down. And since these aren't like terms, I have a negative 2x and a 6. So I write negative 2x, negative 2x, and a 6. Since those aren't like terms, we just put them together. And remember when I say the word and, that does imply the addition symbol. So I have a negative 2x and a 6. So I have those two terms. Now to get y by itself, we need to get rid of this multiplication by using division. And what I'm going to do over here is divide each side also by 3. So that has to happen. So these threes divide out. My y gets by itself. Um, that fraction negative two thirds does not simplify, so we just leave that as negative two thirds on the outside. We put that x out to the side like that. We just kind of slide it out. And then we do know that three does go to six twice, so I can simplify that down to a, a whole number. So now what we're going to do is uh, we've solved for y. We now want to make a table and find three solutions. So when it's solved for y, in finding three solutions, we always want to pick numbers that work well for us because, again, we're going to try to graph these on a coordinate plane, and we are looking for whole number answers as, as if, if possible. And we do know that if, if I choose x to be 0, that's going to be a very easy number to play with. So if I have y equals and I put negative 2 thirds x, and I put a 0 there instead, we know that negative 2 thirds times 0 is going to be 0, and then 0 plus 2 is going to give me 2. So if I put a 0 in for x, uh, y is, is going to equal 2. So 0 in for x, and y equals 2. And remember, that's also a very special point. That also represents what we refer to as the, uh, the y-intercept. So anytime we set x equals 0, we're also looking for that y-intercept. And it is also a solution to our equation. Now, my next thing is I don't want to have fractions, so I want to pick a number that I can actually divide by 3. And 3 is a good number there, because 3 can be divided by 3. So that 3 is going to dictate that I choose a 3 here. And we do know that 3 is going to go to 3. It's going to divide out. That's going to give me a negative 2 plus 2, which is going to give me a 0. So if x equals 3, y is equal to 0. So 3, 0 would be located at that spot. And that so happens, that is the, um, that's the x-intercept. So we found that really not even trying to. It just kind of fell into it. Another value for x that I can choose, since I have a 3 there, it's not a bad idea to just use a negative 3. So I have negative 2 thirds times a negative 3 and add a 2. And we know that that 3 is going to go to negative 3 and give me a negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 2. And 2 plus 2 is going to turn and give me a, a positive 4 there. So I chose x to be negative 3 and y became a 4. So negative 3, 4 would also be a solution. So negative 3 of 4, that should be at that spot. So once I've found my three solutions and I've graphed them, all I have to do, do now is, um, is just graph the line that passes through those three points. So, if I can get that to hold for me. So I, I've achieved my goal. I have graphed my line, again, which represents all the answers to this equation. Okay? So again, we did a little bit different strategy this time. We actually solved for y 
by getting y by itself and creating this equation right here. Something to pick up on is, notice this little 2 here. That 2 represents a special point. That's where it's going to cross the y-axis. Something else we're going to pick up on is this negative 2 thirds. Notice how it's going to have a relationship to this problem. If I go down 2, right 3, that's going to help me see some things. We're going to talk more about that special number, that, that number in front of the uh, x. This coefficient has some special meaning as we move forward. Okay. So um, I'm going to stop there and I will do one more example solving for y. Stay tuned.